Hey guys, my name is Frankie Chenna and I am the coach of WSDC Denmark and the owner of Fostering Debate Talent Academy in Vancouver, Canada. And I've been coaching high school speech and debate for uh, just over 10 years. So I'm gonna try my best to get through all of these questions. I hope it's helpful. I have a lot of experience and if you have any other questions, um, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, yeah, I hope this helps. Okay, selection process. How do you encourage students to trial for WSDC? Um, at the beginning of Team Denmark, our first tryout, it had five students. So the five students who tried out were the five students who went to WSDC. Um, I think this just takes time. It takes um, reaching out to a lot of the schools and a lot of the clubs um, in the communities, English speaking union, Toastmasters, any kind of uh, groups that are promoting public speaking and debating or even just English and social studies and history um, would be a great place to start. Um, writing to local newspapers and, and getting articles as the team gets better and better. But basically this is something that takes time. Coming into the sixth year with Team Denmark, um, we still only have about 20 to 30 people um, trying out for the team every year. Um, uh, once you have a database of alumni as well, asking them to, to reach out to schools and to their contacts will definitely help. Um, how do you design a selection process that gets you the best kids? Well, in Denmark, uh, we typically have a five day um, camp. I think that this could be, um, you know, decreased to a three day camp or increased to a seven day camp. Basically, um, the selected students have to participate in an audition. They have to um, submit a video and a written application and that gets them to the uh, training camp in January in Denmark. I know in other countries with bigger debate communities, they also can select based on tournaments. But in Denmark, we don't have a, a national selection tournament, therefore we do the application. But I think either system is fine. You just wanna make sure you're getting a group of people um, to a physical trial. And I think it could be anywhere from 10 to 20 students um, is a good number. In Denmark, we actually train these students on WSDC while also selecting them because they will have had no access to um, world's debating at this point in their debate careers. So they have to both learn world schools debate and we have to select them. So I think we're looking for a variety of things. We're looking for uh, passion, commitment, confidence, um, speaking skills, content, the ability to um, understand research and, and the ability to um, actually be able to research. So we're kind of assessing all of these things while training them and just also seeing how fast they can pick up on the skills because in Denmark, um, they're not going to be able to compete in too many tournaments before going to the world championships. Um, I would say that it should tr you should try to make the camp in person. I think that's going to be a lot better. But of course, with technology, um, Team Denmark uses Skype and Zoom um, a lot for a variety of things. So um, definitely, you can try that. Um, some of the issues that I'm seeing here, so low interest among students, again, it takes time. Um, and even if you just have a few captivated students, that's all you really need. So just remember, it only takes three to build a team, um, but hopefully you can find more than that. For funding, um, I think that the, the training and selection can be uh, pretty cost effective. Um, if you have someone willing to volunteer as the coach and you have a, a school that can volunteer um, as the location, then I don't think funding should be too much of a barrier. Um, experience among selectors, you definitely want to try to have one experienced WSDC um, person at the selection process. Even if you can get them in via Skype, I'm sure there would be people around the community willing to help with that. Um, and large distances for, for to uh, get to the location, that's definitely an issue um, even in Denmark and, and especially in Canada. But again, as much as possible, try to make this both the selection and a training camp to have your students um, all together is going to be really, really beneficial. What considerations do you keep in mind when deciding team composition? Uh, we definitely look at age at, uh, in, for Team Denmark. Um, students who are gonna be graduating right away and can only attend one world championship, we consider them for sure, but I would say that if you can have students who have more years of training before um, going to their first WSDC or for those who can go to multiple WSDCs, that's probably going to be um, more beneficial in the, in the long run. 
Um, students with knowledge versus students with skills. Uh, I think knowledge can be taught, um, but I think skills and the ability to learn and progress is a lot more difficult. So I would say that we lean more towards selecting students based on skill and potential rather than um, knowledge. As far as potential in speaker positions, we typically wait until we've selected the team for that. Um, gender and regional and other diversity considerations, I think that's really going to depend on your country. You know, there's so, um, so much diverse culture at WSDC, and I'm sure that some countries try to um, have diversity quotas and regional quotas and gender quotas. Um, I think that they are completely appropriate if it works for your country, but I know as a coach, my philosophy is picking the, the best students, regardless of, of, um, of gender or diversity. The other thing to consider here is that some countries pick five people to go to Worlds. Other countries pick 10 or 12 to be on the greater squad. Um, this could be a great chance to perhaps fill some diversity um, um, quotas or uh, not quotas, but to fulfill diversity um, requirements if that's what your country is looking for. Um, but again, on the team of five, for me at least, I'm looking for the, the five with the most merit. Um, team captain. I, I would say that a team captain is not necessary. Uh, team Denmark has had one um, in some years for um, just for symbolic purposes, basically. Their role really is to just um, kind of be a veto in the prep room in some cases or to flip the coin. Um, but in Denmark, at least, it's been symbolic. I know other countries, the team captain plays a much bigger um, part, determining who's debating what rounds, um, you know, maybe leading the team in the prep room and things like that. But for Denmark, we usually um, spread that among the whole team. Um, okay, selecting a squad training and then selecting the team versus selecting a team directly and training them. Um, this is a great question and I think that the, the dichotomy is quite um, clear and simple. If you select the team right away and train them, that just means more time to practice, more time practicing as a group of five, more time working with the coach, more time learning as a group. The drawback here is that you maybe didn't get to select the best five people because you didn't train a larger group and then choose from that larger group. Um, also, you're not necessarily giving the skills of the program to as many students as possible. So in Denmark, we now have a larger squad um, that we try to, to choose from um, when determining the team. Okay, well, that was the questions on selection process, and I hope that was helpful.